Trisomy 13 is a horrible condition, causing some of the most extreme deformities you'll ever see. And with a one-year survival rate of only 20%, most children don't make it past the first few months. This child has trisomy 13. This is my son. In this video, I want to talk to you about what this condition even is, who it affects, and what it's like to raise a child afflicted by it. My aim in this video is to leave you with general medical knowledge about the condition itself, and to give you some insight into what it's like for parents and even children living through it down on the ground. This is Trisomy 13, a rare and horrible condition. Trisomy 13, also known as Patau syndrome, is a genetic disorder, meaning it's a disorder that results from mutations in the genetic code of a baby during its development in the womb. Trisomy 13 belongs to the same group of disorders as Trisomy 21, commonly known as Down syndrome. These disorders are called trisomies, and are characterized by the presence of three copies of a specific chromosome instead of the usual two. In trisomy 13, the extra copy occurs on chromosome number 13. The most common form of trisomy 13, and the one that this video focuses on, is full trisomy 13. Children suffering from this disorder will be inflicted with a range of extreme defects, including, but not at all limited to, profound intellectual disabilities, heart defects, brain or spinal cord abnormalities, very small or poorly developed eyes, otherwise known as microthalmia, cleft lip and or cleft palate, extra fingers or toes, also known as polydactyly, and weak muscle tone, or hypotonia. And in the most extreme cases, there will be the presence of defects generally incompatible with life, such as hollow prosencephaly, in which the brain fails to completely divide into two distinct hemispheres. And the results of this are horrifying. The vast majority of such cases don't survive birth or pass soon after. My son, named Elijah, or Lilay for short, is currently 7 years old and was born with the most severe form of this disorder, full trisomy 13. At birth, he had a number of defects, the most significant of which included multiple heart conditions which required surgery, a cleft palate, which causes problems with eating and therefore required him to have a peg tube inserted. He also had missing skin on his scalp, also called cutis aplasia, and breathing difficulties, which require him to have a tracheostomy tube and for the first few years of his life, a ventilator. On top of that, he's classified as being profoundly intellectually and physically disabled. Put simply, he cannot walk or talk, and likely never will. As you can see, trisomy 13 is a horrible disorder. However, thankfully, it is also an incredibly rare one. But who exactly does it affect? For expectant mothers and families, what are your chances of having a child afflicted with this disorder? Well, that's what we're going to talk about now. Thank you. 
As stated earlier, trisomy 13 is a genetic disorder. This means that it's a condition that is present in the genes of newborn babies. It is not an infectious disease and is therefore not something you or anyone else can catch. In most cases, around 95%, trisomy 13 is caused by a random mutation. And because it is random, this means that it can affect absolutely any pregnancy at all. Recent studies indicate that trisomy 13 affects approximately 1 to 2 in every 10,000 births, ranking it among the rarest yet most prevalent genetic disorders. However, whilst it is rare, one of the most significant risk factors for trisomy 13 pregnancy is advanced maternal age. Simply put, the older an expectant mother is, the higher the likelihood of carrying a child with trisomy 13. As you can see in this graph, the probability increases nearly tenfold between the ages of 20 and 40. In addition to being caused by random genetic mutation, in around 3-5% of cases, trisomy 13 can also be inherited from one or both parents via something called translocation. This is the rarest form of trisomy 13, however, due to the fact that it can be inherited, genetic testing should be done on both parents to diagnose the cause and help avoid future trisomy pregnancies. Okay, so now that we've discussed who's affected by trisomy 13, let's explore how it impacts their lives. What is life like for parents who give birth to and raise trisomy children? And what about the lives of the children themselves? Before we talk about the life of a trisomy 13 parent, I just want to let you know that I have covered this topic extensively on this channel in many videos. So if you have particular interest in this topic, particularly about life with an older child of about 3 to 7 years old, consider watching some of those videos, as many of them go into detail that is beyond the scope of this video. Life as a trisomy 13 parent is in most cases extremely short. The reason being that the vast majority of trisomy children don't live past their first few days. Those few days will likely consist of parental visits to the NICU or the neonatal intensive care unit where the child is being cared for, and if any surgical intervention is even possible, where some extremely difficult decisions will need to be made. If the child is able to survive those first few days, which largely depends on both the severity of the child's defects and whether or not medical intervention was administered, the parents will likely need to make some more really difficult decisions about their child's care and future. If the child needs more intensive medical intervention, such as a tracheostomy, are they willing to subject their child to the required surgeries? They need to ask themselves the question, do they actually want their child to survive? Is further survival in their child's best interests? Or would it be better to withdraw care and allow their child to live and pass naturally? Assuming the child does survive, the parents may now have the opportunity to take the child home from hospital. This is the beginning of their life as carers of a terminally ill baby. For me personally, this was both a wonderful time and the most harrowing time of my life. Having my son home with me was so special. The cuddles and tickles and chance to be a first time dad was, to put it mildly, magical. Oh, he's cute. What are you doing? What are you doing?
However, waking up to the sounds of his heart monitor beeping and my wife screaming my name, running out into the living room to see my son blue, struggling to breathe, my wife in a panic, I will never forget. If we fast forward one year, unfortunately up to 85% of children will not survive to see their first birthday. That said, advances in medical care and shifting attitudes towards providing intervention for these infants have made some ground in improving survival rates in recent years. Life beyond this point, at least for my family, mostly consists of routine caregiving. For us, there is an endless stream of diapers to change, bedding to wash, medicine to administer, syringes, we have so many syringes, and did I mention the diapers? I think I did. It's a fairly restrictive life. It's a life that requires parents to give what is essentially 24-hour care. It's a life that will require regular hospital visits, visits to rehab, and family outings with medical equipment, giant prams, and constant vigilance. At least that's our life. But it's also a life full of love. Full of giving my child anything he wants. Anything within my reach that he reaches for, I'll hand to him. With a tickle and a kiss. And as much love as I can pour onto him. It may not be the life that I dreamed of having, or one that I ever even imagined I could have. But that is my life. I am a trisomy 13 parent. And a really proud one. The life of a trisomy 13 child who survives their first few years will largely depend on their unique medical needs and the ability of their parents and carers to provide ongoing care. In the case of my son, who's currently about seven years old, his life is an extremely peaceful one. It consists mostly of lying in his cot, playing with his various toys enjoying cuddles with mum and dad, and playing with his four-year-old sister. The pain and discomfort that he experiences mostly comes from digestion problems, likely at least in part due to his liquid diet and the various medicines he requires each day. However, the vast majority of his life is apparently pain-free and seems, at least to his daddy watching over him, to be one of quiet, cosy contentment. This flies in the face of what seems to be a popular opinion that Trisomy 13 children live tortuous lives full of pain and misery with parents and carers being guilty of causing that misery by playing God, keeping children alive who would be better served by letting them go. 
Now, of course, I would be lying if I said that I had never considered the possibility that my son's life may be somewhat pointless, may tend to include a little too much pain, not enough joy, not enough action or excitement. But who am I to judge his life for him? All I can do as his parent is to give him the best one within my power, and then observe him. See what he seems to enjoy, what makes him smile, giggle, and then give him more of that. And so far, that seems to be working. He seems by all accounts to be a happy little child. Yes, he is mostly bedbound. Yes, he requires my assistance to breathe, to eat, to go to the toilet. And he doesn't have the same opportunities as, say, my four-year-old daughter. He can't do the things that she can do. He can't run around and ride his bike. But he doesn't know that he's missing all of those things. He's unaware. He's ignorant. And at least in his case, it seems that that ignorance is bliss, because he also smiles when I talk to him. He smiles and giggles when I cuddle him or tickle him. And I think that he thinks that's good enough. And if it's good enough for him, then it's good enough for me. Your sister wants to tickle you. Thank you.